Okie doke. So guys, I have the chat open here. Uh, please, if you have any questions in the middle, you can throw it in the chat because that'll be recorded. If you have not entered your student's first and last name into the chat, please do so now. I'm going to use that to record for attendance. Give you guys a couple of seconds to do that and we are gonna get going here. Right. So Lauren, I saw you just jumped into the room. If you could, uh, please enter your student's first and last name in the chat and mute yourself and we'll get going here. Okay. Um... Okie doke, guys. So hopefully all of you guys RSVP'd for this meeting. If you have not, please scan this QR code right here. That will uh, put you into the right place where we can get you recorded and you will catch all the information for this tour. We're gonna to hold the questions till the end. Like I say, you can throw them in the chat for the time being. We're gonna record that, and that way we won't forget anything. So let's do it. Let's check it out. So we are planning this trip to Puerto Rico, and this tour is called the Island of Natural Wonders. Puerto Rico is a really cool place. Uh, if you guys were there for the info meeting that we had on the 9th of September, we checked out all of the cool stuff about Puerto Rico. So the reason it's called Puerto Rico is because the Spanish thought this place was full of gold, and it was. Um, the natives called it Boriquen, which was um, meant like a very rich land. So the Taino people ruled this place. They came in contact with the Spanish, with Christopher Columbus in the late 1400s, and everything changed for that island since then. Um, today, it is a huge melting pot of a ton of different places, and Puerto Rico is actually a commonwealth of the United States. Great. Just to jog your memory, if you guys were at that meeting. So this meeting today is less about what's going on um, within the country itself, like all the plants and animals and political status. We are going to focus on uh, the tour itself. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, our tour details, our travel partner, which is EF. We have Danny here um, to answer any of your questions. If you guys have it, some of it might be over my head. So she's here to cover our bases, um, safety and support on the tour. Also what's included and how you can reserve your spot. So, hey guys, my name is Tom Olson. You guys might recognize me here from Elite. Um, I work here for, in CTE, which is Career Technical Education, and probably Adventure Academy. So guys, if you just came in, please mute yourself and throw your name into the chat. That would be awesome. See people filtering in here. So yep, go ahead and mute yourself and throw your name in the chat, first and last name. So. Um, those that didn't catch that, Tom Olson, I work here with CTE and the Adventure Academy. I also do the Quest Crew, so if you guys have seen the Wild Side Walks or any of those in-person events like what we did last week, we went to the California Surf Museum, we went to the beach for a day, we went to a couple of hikes up in Poway, tons of fun stuff, we got tons more coming down. This is one of those awesome things that we get to do as a school. The Makerspace Club, we've only had one meeting, but we're going to meet next Monday. That is all about hands-on creation. So if you guys hear about that stuff, just know that I am behind the scenes for that. The reason we wanted to put this together for you guys, not only because I love to travel, but it's because I see so much value within travel. Um, I've been able to take travel all over the world and I've learned so much from those experiences. Um, I did go on a trip when I was fairly young, probably about 14 years old. And it still stuck with me. And I think that trip really instilled a sense of wanting to see more. So I really hope that this is one of those things for your student or for you. So why Puerto Rico too? You might think there's all these other places we could go. Well, it's relatively close. It is on the other side of our nation. It is over by Florida. And there's so much different things going on in this, in this little country. They have a tropical rainforest. In fact, the only tropical rainforest on US soil. Um, they use our currency. English is widely spoken. Spanish is the national language um, as well as English. And we don't need to have a passport, which is super cool because it's a part of the United States as a commonwealth. So uh, this is great because also like in May of 2023, the federal government is going to start requiring anyone flying on an inter a domestic flight even to have a federally issued ID. So if you're thinking about traveling in the next few years, 
um, it's looking pretty good right now to go to Puerto Rico. It'd be pretty awesome. I have a few photos here. These ones right here are from Colombia. This is a trip that I took a couple of years back. Um, so cool. It was all about backpacking and fishing and that kind of stuff. And it was a blast. We saw some really cool things. Uh, this is from a more recent trip I took to Bulgaria. This is right before COVID. This is the Rila Mountains. I uh, had an opportunity to go inside of a volcano, which was so cool. This volcano blew up the same year Mount St. Helens did in Washington, and it got filled with a giant sulfuric lake. There's like no one out there too. You can totally go explore it. So cool. Uh, and this is one, another one from uh, El Coqui in Colombia, an incredible mountain range, um, absolutely extraordinary. So just an example of what you can do with travel. It's pretty cool. All right, so this is our tour here, guys. It is a seven day tour to the tropical island of Puerto Rico. We will be going over our spring break. And here's just a big example of all the things we're going to do. So instead of reading this whole list, I want you guys to look through this list and write in the chat, what is most exciting on here? What are you most looking forward to? You guys think, do we have adventure travelers or are we more of historians? Cooking classes, cool. Yeah, cooking would be awesome. Yeah, caverns. Caverns would be excellent. When I was in high school, I got to uh, be a part of what we called Cave Club. And it was led by my crazy biology teacher. And he would take us all over the state to all these different caves and dangle us off ropes and have us go explore these places. And it's probably one of the reasons rock climbing is not my favorite sport, but <laughs> um, it was so cool. It was so, so cool to experience that. So um, yeah, the cave systems. Caves are so cool, guys. You just cannot believe it's always 55 degrees down there. So even if we're on a tropical island, you go into the caves, it's nice and cool and damp. It feels really nice. So awesome. Yeah, tons of stuff. So I figured, Rather than reading this list to you guys, I was just gonna take you there virtually. So here's an example of some of the stuff that's going on. Someone said the bioluminescent bay. It is so beautiful to see, so awesome. We get to take a day to just go cruise around Luquillo Beach, which is just a beautiful stretch of sand that we can explore. San Juan has a ton of awesome stuff. And El Yunque National Forest is the only tropical rainforest on US soil. So tons of cool stuff to go see. I thought this would be cooler though. So I'm a huge Google Earth nerd. It's pretty much my video game. I spend some evenings just scrolling around the world trying to see what looks interesting. And I put together this little presentation for us to go through together. I think this could be kind of fun. So hopefully, can everyone see Google Earth here on the top screen? Everyone can see that? Okay, now I want to see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but where on this map is Puerto Rico? You guys can unmute yourself. Let's see, where is it? Does anyone have an idea? I said it was next to something earlier. Where is that place? You can say like it's next to that giant cloud or something like that. To the right of Mexico, to the left of Florida, near Florida. So right of Mexico, here's Mexico, yep. To the left of Florida, not quite to the left of Florida. It's not quite in the Gulf of Mexico, near Florida. Yep. So I don't know if you guys can see the cyclone off here. You see the hurricane in the ocean? Right here, you might pick up on a couple of these pins that I put in there. But as we zoom in, we can see that here's Puerto Rico. Super cool place. So to the north, we have the Atlantic Ocean. To the south, we have the Caribbean Sea. And if anyone's ever been to the Caribbean, it is the most beautiful blue waters. It is just gorgeous. The, the um, sea life that you can see in the Caribbean is like amazing. There's manatees, there's turtles, octopus. They have like bioluminescent jellyfish. So like jellyfish that have like rainbow colors traveling down them, like crabs with sponges on their back that use it for um, camouflage. Like it's just crazy. It's so cool. So the other thing that makes Puerto Rico so cool is this giant black spot. Do you guys see this just north of the country? That is the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean. So it is within like a couple thousand feet deep of the Marianas Trench. So we're talking like 20,000 feet deep of water. 
Um, if you guys know anything about me, I'm terrified of deep water. I can't stand it. It freaks me out. So this is terrifying for me. But on the other side, there's beautiful blue water that's shallow and I can see the bottom. So um, it's just so cool. These deep, deep trenches bring up a ton of nutrient rich water and that feeds the crazy uh, array of life that we might see when we're down there. So that's just a brief um, geography of the place, but let's check it out. All right, so this is San Juan. This is where we're gonna show up. Um, we'll land here. You can even see the airport right there. But out here on this point on day one, we get to go explore old San Juan. So you guys might've heard me say that the Spanish found, you know, discovered quote unquote, the island in the late 1400s. And they initially were like, whoa, okay, this island's pretty important. We need to check this out. So they found this bay and they were like, great, this is a perfect spot to build a fort. So they put up this awesome Castillo, which is just a castle more or less. Um, but Castillo San Felipe del Moro is an awesome structure. We can see over here in this image that there's so much history happening here. This place is over 500 years old, um, older than anything we really have on Northern US soil, and it's still in great tax. So it would be so cool to cruise around and explore this. And you can see it's in such a neat spot, looking out onto the point and back into the bay. Tons to see here. Within the city too, if we have any history buffs out there, we're gonna check out some really cool cathedrals, um, awesome promenades, all these things that the Spanish are really showing off the opulence that they were gathering from all the gold on this island. Here we go, here's that promenade. This is Paseo de la Princesa. Walk through here. So this is going to be a really cool opportunity while we're there to gather some knickknacks and that sort of thing. If you guys are hoping to bring home a couple of I don't know, special souvenirs of that kind of thing, the chances are we're going to run into some of that in this spot. So that'd be super cool. If you guys have some ideas, um, yeah, this would be a great spot to pick up some of that stuff. All right, cool, another Spanish fort we can see here. Now what I want you guys to look at in this picture, do you guys notice these notches right here in the walls? What do you think those notches were for? You can see them over here too. You guys think they were using those for? Yeah, cannons to ward off the pirates because they were actually pirates in the Caribbean. And the pirates wanted the Spanish gold. So the pirates were coming in and they had to defend themselves by shooting off cannons. So like think back, Pirates of the Caribbean, this is real life, super cool. So, hey guys, so those that just jumped in, just be sure you mute yourself and then throw your name into the chat if you guys haven't done that yet, just so I can record that for attendance, that'd be awesome. Okay, so San Juan's neat, but there's so much more to see on this island. On day three, we're gonna to go to the Arecibo Observatory. And now the Arecibo Observatory, unlike other uh, telescopes out there, is looking at an interesting part of our atmosphere, which is the ionosphere. The ionosphere is full of a bunch of tiny little ions, like the name might sound, way high up, way, way above. We are in the troposphere. So we're in the very, very bottom down here. So this crazy telescope, is observing our highest, utmost atmosphere. But while the telescope's really cool too, look at the topography at where this place is. Kind of wild, you see all these crazy hills? This is what they call more or less karst topography. It's extremely steep and it typically happens when limestone is eroding. And the reason we also see caves is because there's a lot of limestone too. Limestone is basically ancient seabed. And when it starts to erode, um, it's full of calcium. So water easily dissolves calcium and it carries the calcium where it starts to deposit things. And this is where we get like stalactites, stalagmites and like crazy cave formations, popcorn rocks and bacon looking features, all sort of crazy stuff like that. So very cool. The telescope's awesome, but just the surrounding area is super neat. Okay, so I mean, you guys said that those caverns were something of interest. So if we check this out, there's some really cool caves. The whole island's covered in caves because it's all that limestone, that ancient seabed. You can see these giant holes into these sinkholes that you can go crawl into. We'll have the opportunity to see those. You see some stalactites right here? Yep. So fun. Awesome stuff to see. All right, so. 
we're going back to the city. This is Ponce. Uh, Ponce is kind of cool. It's on the Caribbean. Uh, we're going to check out some cooking classes and a couple other things in the area. Um, it'll be nice to kind of cruise around and get just a different flavor of the island to explore. So this is an example of Puerto Rican cooking. We're going to do this in Ponce. Um, and this is arroz con grandulale, grandules, excuse me, uh, fried plantains or um, frituras. So uh, the Caribbean food in general is really good. Um, they like a lot of spices. Uh, a lot of times you'll see rice, you'll see beans, which you guys might know if you don't know Spanish are frijoles, but in Puerto Rico, they call them habichuelas. Most of the Caribbean calls beans habichuelas. So we'll start to pick up on all these like different cultural things as we cruise through. Okay, we're heading up to La Perguera. We're gonna check out some snorkeling and the town might not look like too much from here, but once you turn your view and you start looking out into the ocean right here, there's some amazing coral reefs. Super duper cool and tiny little islands, but all of these dark spots that you see surrounded by sand are all reefs. So tons of cool stuff to explore. Okay, doke. Well, as we cruise on, this is probably one of the weirdest sites we're going to see. This is Cabo Rojo. And Cabo Rojo, as the name might say, um, is Red Point, Red Cape, more or less. And you can see even in the satellite imagery here, as we look down, there's these spots of kind of pinkish color. What do you guys think the pink color is from? Why is the water pink? Got high salt content, right? It's a great guess. Gases, yeah, right? What is going on with this stuff? Algae, totally. Algae's a little bit closer. It's a bunch of weird bacteria in the water. So this isn't the only place we'll see this on the planet, but it's one of the few places. It's not super common. So you can see over here that we have some salt production. So these are salt flats where they're drying up the air. Um, red tide kind of, kind of like red tide. Um, I believe red tide is an algae. It's a blue green algae, I believe. Um, but the red tide in the area also produces the bioluminescent color as well. So there's also these little creatures inside the tides as well that are um, reacting, creating some light in the chemistry of the creature. So very cool. So yeah, Cabo Rojo, kind of a wild place. Be super cool to see over here. You can start to see this is where they're um, evaporating the uh, air out of, or the sorry, the water out of the salt water to create salt deposits. So sea salt. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I know it's not a great picture, but you get an idea of the glow in the water. Has anyone here seen bioluminescent water before? Has anyone had that opportunity? I've seen a couple of yeses. Yeah. We get it in California, we do. It happens every now and then, it's the red tide. Um, I've seen it in several bays, even as far north as Alaska. So this stuff can happen all over, but it typically takes a really protected bay where these creatures can kind of create colonies. And it's amazing, you can go out and skip rocks and every time the rock hits the water, it just lights up bright blue. Uh, and every time you swim, your whole arm is just covered in like bright, bright blue. It is so cool, um, such a phenomenon. All right, so we're back to those caves. We're not going snorkeling on that first day, but we're gonna be based out of this town. So that's kind of nice that we're not gonna be like bouncing around all the time. We will have some time to chill out and um, enjoy a certain region. So this is just an example of the kind of corals that you guys can see. Very, very cool. Do we have any snorkelers or even divers in the group? Anyone here like to snorkel or dive? You heard me say once that I don't like deep water. I can handle snorkeling. As long as I'm not looking into like the black abyss, I'm okay. No snorkeling. Okay, that's fine. We'll find something fun to do. If nothing else, just the beach is awesome. And you might've noticed too, that there's a tiny little island out here. So who knows? Maybe you can go explore, find those crabs that have sponges for shell or yeah, sponges for shells. Super weird. Okay. Puerto Rican dance lessons though. So we're coming back to San Juan. We were over on the other side and we went all the way over to the Caribbean side and now we are back on the Atlantic side. So we're like circumambulating this island, pretty cool. 
Um, Puerto Rican dance lessons. There's a lot going on here. So you might have seen these bright, colorful dresses. Puerto Rico is known for that. Uh, and we're going to try it out. So just shake some loose and it'll be an awesome time. Okay. So while we're on this island, one other day, we are coming over to this Fajardo. And on this side of the island, we get to just chill out. It's going to be so nice. We'll have been moving for the whole week. We'll be pretty tired at this point. We're just going to want to relax. So we finally get a day to cruise the Keo Beach and just explore. And if we zoom in on here, I mean, we've got nice beaches, but this is like the real stuff, the natural things. You know, California only has one native palm tree. All the other palm trees they brought in, these palm trees are native. These are just like walking through a palm forest, exploring the coast. You can see a picture here of that beautiful water. If you have a snorkel mask with you, this might be a great opportunity. I'm definitely bringing mine so we have that chance to see some stuff. But you can just see this awesome mixed forest right here in all the palms. Might be some coconut palms. If we see a coconut palm, I'll show you guys how to crack them open. They're really, really cool. You gotta like peel the husk off. And then in the face of the coconut, there's a little like face. There's two eyes and a mouth. And you poke out its mouth and you can stick a straw in there and drink it. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Super fun. All right. We go back to San Juan. We're jumping on the airplane and we are flying all the way back to LAX. So that is the tour. Hopefully that, guys, that gives you guys a really good sense of everything we're going to do and see. Um, start thinking if you have any questions, any ideas right now, uh, be sure to write down because we are going to chat about it. So get out of this and jump back into our other presentation here. Let's talk details. Okay, so the earliest possible date that we will leave is March 12th. The latest possible date we'll get back is March 22nd. So this lines up perfectly with our spring break here to leave. This is awesome. It means you guys won't miss any schoolwork. You don't have to stress about doing homework while you're on the trip. You can really just enjoy this experience without feeling frantic. And like you have to go back to the hotel at night and get stuff done. So super cool. There's still going to be downtime where we can chill and relax, but um, we just thought it'd be really helpful for you guys to choose those dates. So Danny's here too to help explain some of this stuff. And I think I'm just going to turn it over to her right now because she is with EF and she knows why um, the company is doing what it's doing, right? Uh, so many people have gone with EF to travel and it's because there's so much peace of mind with this. So I'm going to let her take over and uh, explain that to you guys. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny, like you mentioned. Um, so first off, EF is the world leader in educational travel. We have 50 plus years of experience. Um, we also do a lot of international travel. Um, we also have a global presence with 500 schools and offices worldwide. So normally, if this was a DC trip, I'd say when you're at the Ronald Reagan building, we have an office there. Our headquarters is in um, Boston. We do not have an office in Puerto Rico, but a lot of the time you will see other EF groups there. We have boots on the ground everywhere. And in the next couple of slides, we'll talk about safety and security and having boots on the ground everywhere really plays into that. We are also an accredited institution with free credit options for our travelers. So if you're interested in getting um, half a credit for a high school elective or a little bit of college credit, those are both options that we have so much like the institution that you guys are learning with with Elite. Um, EF is an accredited institution as well. Um, if you're interested in either of those, we can get you more information. I do want to say the college credit does require a small tuition just because you are gaining that college credit with it. And then lastly, EF's peace of mind policy. Um, we have different options for our travelers. We know sometimes things do come up um, where you may not be able to follow through with your travel plan. So we give flexible options to um, our, all of our families in regards to the trip that you are going on. And then you can go ahead and hop to the next. Um, I mentioned safety on the last slide. We're gonna go into safety details on this slide. So while you are on tour, you will have a 24 seven tour director. So as soon as you land in Puerto Rico, they will be with you anywhere and everywhere that you go on the island, um, as well as 24 hour emergency support. So the tour director will be with you. So will Mr. Olson. Um, we also have emergency support. So parents, if you're trying to get a hold of your student, students, something goes wrong group leader, something goes wrong, there are people that are on call that 
basically talk to all parties involved and make sure that they follow each case from close until or from open until close. I've actually worked um, this emergency call line multiple times over the past couple of months while we've had groups on the road. And I've dealt with everything from flights being delayed, rebooked flights to twisted ankles in the national parks in Utah. So we make sure that we're there every step of the way, make sure that parents know what's going on if there is something that happens. Um, in addition to both of those things, we have professional overnight security dedicated to the group. So as soon as they get to the hotel at night, there will be a security guard that sits in the hallway, make sure that no one's sneaking in or sneaking out of their rooms and getting well rested for the next day of activities. Um, this also allows Mr. Olson to get his beauty rest and make sure that he's ready for a day of adventures as well. Um, any adults, so anyone 18 and over that does go on the tour are required to have a background check. So that gives uh, parents peace of mind knowing that anyone that does travel with your student will have that qualification met. Um, and then lastly, um, teacher chaperones. So we are in line with what schools require where every 10 students that are on tour, we make sure that there is one teacher chaperone to go with you. Um, we will make sure to have a ton of support and that's outside of parent travelers that do wanna go on this trip as well. And um, lastly, uh, world, we have partnered with the World Travel and Tourism Council to get the safe, the safe stamp of approval for anything when it comes to uh, safety hygiene on tour. We know that since COVID hit last year, um, those things have been heightened on airlines, on buses. Um, so anything that EF does do functionality wise during the duration of the tour, we will adhere to what World Travel and Tourism Council is expecting worldwide. Um, that's just another, you know, check of approval that we have for our tours, op our op operating tours. We have a couple questions coming in. Um, I promise you we'll address them at the end so everyone can see them. They're coming directly to me. So I wanna make sure they're great questions and I want everyone to know them. Um, so traveler support, traveler support is a team outside of those emergency on-call staff. They are a team that is available to you during the week. They sit in the Boston office and they will answer any what ifs or how to questions that you might have. Um, if you want questions regarding your student's account, if you want questions about what to pack, they are there um, for you to utilize. You will also have my contact information so you can reach out to me directly or Mr. Olson. Um, EF also awards out over $50,000 in needs-based scholarships to travelers from around the country. So I've actually had some of my schools where two students both qualified for $1,000 each for the same trip. So don't think that if other people are applying, you're not gonna get it. Everyone needs to try. Um, it, it's various amounts that they offer. It is based on needs. It's a short 250 word essay as to why you wanna go on this trip. And then um, a little bit of information filled out by usually a parent or a guardian. And then every traveler that does enroll on the tour will get a personalized traveling page. Um, this will allow you to see everything that's going on with your student's account. It'll show you how much you owe, any to-do lists that are coming up. We will also send email, email reminders. But it, the biggest thing on this is that it'll give you a link to the giving page. So the giving page is very much like a GoFundMe, except unlike GoFundMe where they retain a couple, um, a little bit of what is earned, 100% of what is donated will go directly to your student's account. Um, so we encourage using this for holidays, for birthdays, for good grade incentives, tour incentives, anything like that. Send it out to friends and family. Any little bit does help knock off that overall cost. It'll go to the overall cost of your tour, and then you'll see those monthly payments drop down as well as money starts coming in. We're good to go to the next page. Okay, so protection plans. We have opted to keep the protection plans out of this um, just because that keeps the cost lower for our families, but we do wanna make them available to you. You can see that there's two different plans available. We have our base plan, which is the $99 travel protection plan. And then we have the $279 one, which is the travel protection plus plan. Um, both of these will roll right, right into your payments. It'll cover flight delays. It'll cover tour interruption. It'll cover baggage and property. Um, and both allow you the maximum refund available. The biggest difference between these two is the $99 one um, is covered for any valid reason. So this would, could be illness, death in the family, loss of job, the travel protection plus plan. You can go outside and the sky may not be blue enough one day and you can cancel. Both of these will allow you to cancel up until day of departure and give you the maximum refund available. Um, like I said, you are able to opt into these whenever you do join. We have not opted for any to be included in that overall price right now. Um, so much like uh, everything else, 
everything is included in this um, round trip transportation, that full time tour director on tour transportation, safe quality hotel rooms, guided tours and activities, breakfast, lunch and dinner. So all meals are taken care of that professional overnight security um, industry leading student to chaperone ratio. So that's all those teacher chaperones that'll make sure that we have enough support while on tour a personalized learning guide. So if you're interested in getting high school or college credit, you're able to get that personalized learning guide, 24 hour emergency assistance, illness and accident coverage. So I know this may be confusing with those protection plans. Those protection plans will cover your travel investment. We automatically, any traveler that we have on tour with us, you, you are under EF's illness and accident coverage. So if there is something to go wrong on tour, if you do need to go to the hospital, see a doctor, anything like that, you're covered under EF. Um, same with Mr. Olson. EF has got both um, our group leader, the school, and all travelers covered for up to 51 million. So you're good to go when it comes to anything. You don't need to worry about insurance on tour. Uh, traveler support team. So that's that team that you can call into with for any what ifs or how to's. Tips and gratuities. So that's going to be your bus drivers, any meals that you have. Um, all those tips and gratuities are covered. And that giving page, which is the GoFundMe link, um, the similar GoFundMe link that I talked about. All travelers will also get an awesome EF backpack and a lanyard that will have any of the emergency contact information that they need to know on the back of it. And for the most important part, how to make it happen. So the pay in full amount is for uh, $3,384. To secure your spot, it is a $95 deposit. One thing I do wanna make clear is you are able to use academic funds for this as long as you are in good standing. Um, if you do have any questions on how to make that happen, the $95 does need to be covered by you to secure your spot. And then you can reach out to Mr. Olson on how to use those academic funds. Outside of that $95 deposit, those will turn into five monthly payments of $578. And if you wanna do biweekly payments, that's $289. I know some of our families um, have some money rolling in in January as well. Those are able, that's, those, that funding is also able to be used towards this trip. Totally, so you guys probably know about this, but our student funds here at Elite, um, you guys can utilize that towards the trips. So if you wanna go on the trip, Awesome. If you have a bunch of student funds left over from this semester, you can utilize them. But we need to get that in with your teacher record by, I believe, the 24th of October. It's the 24th or 25th, one of those days. And then if you're on the tour, as soon as those uh, enrichment funds come back in in January, you can allocate those. But we'll need to know by January 25th because that's going to take a big chunk out of your funds. So if you have to get tutoring, other stuff like this, we just need to be sure that we're reserving some money that you can do that with. But there's a big chunk of change that you guys can utilize towards this trip, which is awesome. And I know whenever we did talk to Miss um, Kirkland, she did say the $95 you will need to handle and then anything outside of that you can use the funding for. So that 95 locks in your spot on tour. And then um, manual payments, you can see that we didn't put a price next to that. So manual payments is basically you, lock, you put in that $95, you lock in your spot um, and it's kind of pay as you go. We disadvise against this because a lot of times what happens is months go by, it's the month prior to tour and a lot of families forget to pay um, and then they owe the full amount of the tour. So it, it is an option, you are able to do it, but um, we just encourage using one of the automatic payment plans that we do have. And lastly, how to enroll. Can so um, a question, can I ask a question? Yeah. On the funds, if they're gonna be using them in January, do they have to pay anything besides the 95 before they, they get no, um, and what I do recommend with that, um, you will, so if you are on the manual payment plan, you'll get an extra $50 charge because it's the manual payment plan. And a lot of times we are families that do that uh, cancel. Um, we are actually waiving that manual payment plan fee for anybody because we know you guys have funding coming in. So as long as that's noted, it is on um, any elite travel program it's on their accounts and we can waive that. But um, yeah, it's the $95 to secure, secure the spot. You can use the QR code on the middle of the screen. Um, that'll take you to the link. I know I add, I popped it into the chat, but anyone that did not RSVP, um, I don't have your contact information. I will be sending an email out after this. We have 20 spots available on this tour currently. And then um, one thing that is not listed here, we are offering $75 off to everybody that is enrolling. So that deadline um, is set until October 8th. And like I said, everyone will be getting, if you RSVP'd, 
I have your phone number or I have your email and one of the ways you're gonna be getting communication from us with more details. With that, I will go ahead and start in the questions that I had directly sent to me and anyone that wants to pop it into the chat, you're more than welcome to. Um, one of the questions, and Tom, I may throw this right over to you, is there an age limit for the students? Yes, so we are keeping this for um, seventh and up. So anyone that can participate in CTE courses, you guys can go on this. Um, it's because it's a little bit more active tour. We're gonna to be cruising around a whole bunch. So if we have you know, high school kids and some elementary kids in the same group, it just might create a little bit of um, friction with getting everyone moving at the same speed. So anyone that's younger though, you guys can totally go with Tamara to uh, Washington DC, which would be tons of fun. So uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. just so you guys know. Um, and then another uh, question that came in was, are parents coming along with the students? We no, are, you're welcome. yeah, I was gonna say- Yeah, parents can totally come. come. So it's $400 extra for the parents. Um, and I'll have to get you details on that. If you guys go to the um, page here for, and you click enroll and you get on that list, it'll give you so many more details too. So instead of just writing this stuff down and going back and listening to the recording, if you just go into that page, it will tell you a lot of that details, so. Yeah, and I usually send out um, some answers to frequently asked questions. So um, look out for that. But what I do wanna say is the difference in um, the price for the adults is because they normally room two to a room versus students room four to a room. So it costs, it's it's about $50 a night. Um, it is a seven day tour. And then any adult entrances or um, fees for the activities that you're doing. And then I did put the um, enrollment page link in the chat. So if you are on a computer, you're more than welcome to pop that into the web browser. Um, one of the questions that just came in are the 20 spots represent 20 students or 20 families. So the 20 spots will be 20 students. That also includes any adults that do wanna travel. So any paying traveler that is enrolling on tour, there's 20 spots available. Great question. Yeah, feel free guys at this point, you can unmute yourself, whatever's comfortable for you. Um, Cause someone else might have the same question that you have too. So you're Absolutely. sending it directly to us. So it's, it's easier just to and say. And then I know something that came up um, with a Canada trip that I was talking about. Puerto Rico right now is requiring COVID vaccinations for travel. We do wanna make it clear, EF will make sure that we enact COVID peace of mind if that is still a restriction. Any travel restriction or requirement to the destination that you're going. If it is required, we will enact COVID peace of mind that gives you flexible options for what to do with your tour. So I do wanna make that clear. I know that's usually a question that does come up. Um, we cannot as a company require any vaccination for any tour that you guys are going to. It's all um, prohibitive of the destination that you're traveling to. And so happens as of right now, it's New York, Puerto Rico and um, our Canada, Canada trips that are requiring it. And some of those options would be either we look into another destination if the group decides to opt out because of the requirements, or we can look at a later date where that may not be a requirement or um, refund options for families as well. Great questions, guys. So I noticed a couple people might have just come in a little late too. Um, even if you guys came in a little late, if you could just throw your students first and last name in the chat for uh, attendance, that'd be awesome. So thank you. Yes, and if you did not RSVP tonight, you won't be getting communication from me because I don't have it. I'm actually gonna send the email right now. Um, let me make sure I have. So it does have the adult price in there. It'll go over the travel protection plans and then talk a little bit about the funding and who to reach out to if you have any questions regarding that, um, that is coming your way right now. If you did not get it, that means that you did not RSVP. So I don't have your contact information and I will copy and paste that in there. Aiden, um, you can reach out to Mr. Olson and he will be able to get you a recording of the meeting. Got you, yep. Been recording this for you guys so great to just kind of touch back and like hear this again if something wasn't um yeah awesome you can show your folks so cool guys then, any more questions i'm oh, sorry i repasted yeah. the rsvp link um so if you are late coming to the presentation and you missed a bulk of the information that is going to be the best way for us to get you the information so if you just click on that little bit link and um plop in your information we're able to give you some details regarding what we just talked about
All right, and thanks, like I well. said, you have both of our contact information. So if you do have any questions, you're able to contact us that way. I'm going to throw mine in the chat here too, just in case you guys okay. want to grab that. Um, it's the same one that I use for work. If you guys already have it in there. Cool. Awesome. Well, we did it in 40 minutes, guys. So you still can go out and enjoy your evenings. Um, I want to say thank you so much for being here. It's so awesome to share this with you. Um, awesome. Rhonda and Aiden, sounds like you guys need it. If it's not your elite email, grab my email right now. Um, um, I do have Rhonda's information. Okay, cool. Awesome. Great. Well, if you guys are set, feel free. You guys can leave the meeting. Just want to say thanks for being here. And it would be so cool to see you guys on the trip. You bet. Yep. See you guys. I've sent out a text message and an email to everyone right now. So if you did not have it, then it, you may not have gotten the info from me. Hi, Caesar. Thank you. Oh, we have a hand raised. In claps. In oh, it's claps. Okay. I wasn't sure. Just bravo. Thanks. Thanks for being here. All right. So you guys are more than welcome to stick around. If you have any last minute questions, you just want to ask us in person, totally fine. But if not, you guys are free to go. Go enjoy your evening. Thank you, Aiden. See you, Aiden. Remember, I'm totally here if you need a chaperone. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, Chrissy. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Have a good yeah. Bye -bye. time at home. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. thanks. See ya. Awesome. Delia, do you have a question for us?